אבל... Hello everybody, welcome to Seed Story Cup 5. This is Nemshan, I'm with Gara and Sian. And uh, we are here to cast one of the most anticipated matches in Hearthstone history, which is Temple Storm Froden versus Temple Storm Eloise. Guys, how are you doing and how excited are you for this match specifically? I mean, pretty high chance that Temple Storm will advance, at least from this round. Yeah, Temple Storm wins this one, at least. Yeah. For sure. So, pretty good chance that uh, Temple Storm goes into top eight. So, pretty good about, now yeah, pretty excited about that, but at the same time, temp one Temple Storm member might drop out. So, yeah. kind of bad at the same time. Um, yeah, I mean, we know both of those guys pretty well. And it's kind of sad to see them, like, face each other this early in the brackets. Yeah, I mean, uh, nobody wants a team kill. No, but. yeah. It's kind of early, right? When you think about it in the tournament. If this would be top eight, I mean, it's kind of hard yeah, to that, avoid that, that it. has point. to happen, right? Yeah. So, uh, are you rooting for someone specific? Yeah, like Cyan. Uh, are you rooting for one of them specifically? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for the Tempest Storm player. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, Froden, because we practiced a bit together for the lineup. And, All right. Uh, so you guys have already seen the Shaman, so... And actually, we're already in the game, so let's uh, talk about the lineups quickly. Uh, what was banned and then why? So, Cyan, I think you have the... Yeah, so Frodan bans Eloise's Shaman deck because he brought Rogue. Okay. One of the, um, the strongest counters to Rogue is the Shaman, so taking that out of the way is great for him. And I believe Eloise bans Frodan's Warrior? Warrior. Yeah. Yes. And uh, why did she ban the Warrior? Because Warriors were like one of the strongest classes, really hard to counter. Yeah, uh, it's just Warrior has so many different variants, and Eloise is probably afraid that Frodan brings a Control Warrior, which um, is incredibly favored against some of Eloise's more mid-range decks. All right, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, even though we don't know Frodan's decks, Eloise, I guess, knows most of the Frodan decks? Uh, yeah, they might have talked a little bit. I mean, you have to, right? Because yeah. you're on the same team, you come into this. Um, even though Frodan's only played his Shaman on stream, she has a pretty fair idea of what his other decks are as well. Okay, so the biggest Kappa Pride match <laughs> at the very moment. Um, and now, actually, we can finally release that Sane came up with the Bok Champ Shaman. Uh, we saw this earlier. We had to keep it kind of hidden because Sane hasn't played yet. Um, in the brackets, he was like one of the last groups. So we didn't want to reveal that he also had the Bokchem Shaman. So he knows a lot about this deck and also about the matchups. So what do you think about the Dragon Warrior Bokchem Shaman matchup? Is the Bokchem Shaman favorite? Well, it all comes down to one word. Ellie Giggle. Ellie. If you find Elemental Destruction, matchup is very good for you. If not, eh, it can be a little rough. I mean, Double Farsight is pretty good, right? In the hand. Yeah, if you Farsight the right minion, it can completely change the game. So basically, like, what you have to do as Warrior, you have to be super aggressive. And just kill them before they, they stabilize, or can you fight for board as well? Well, one of the hardest things coming into this matchup is that the Dragon Warrior just puts on so much pressure. Right. If you try and wait for elemental destruction or you, tr you can't remove things one by one, it gets a little bit rough for you. You take too much damage and then you're not converting your mana well enough for the turn that you really, really need to. So in Frodan's case, um, like turn one, Eloise coins out the Alex Strauss's champion. Frodan has to react with using the, um, the Stormcrack. Yeah. So he can't wait too much for value. This one-on-one -on -one removal process isn't favorable for Frodan. All right, that's a really good analysis, and... Uh, oh, this, thr this throw was pretty good. You're getting a dragon together 3-6, obviously, yeah. And then Cor I mean, Coraptor on 5 as well will be activated. Yeah, Luis has a really good curve. It's exactly what you want. It's she has very, the Vorex, she has the, bla she has the black, uh, black Ticker. But All she needs now is an Execute. There is the Elemental Destruction and Halazael in hand as well. Also, the reduction of the Hex is pretty handy, to be honest. I mean, zero mana hex is uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Color. You have this pocket hex player whenever you want. So, what do you guys suggest now uh, for Frodan? Five mana, many options. You're always kind of scared of the execute, right? Um. Like this is a bit of awkward overall because you can overload yourself, which is uh, which might be troublesome. There is nothing to release the overload so I far. I think it's okay to go for the Earth Ele. Yeah, then hex the uh, the frothing. So why why was it the best play? You take less damage if he has the execute right. 
and it's you only overload for free, so you have the elemental destruction in the following turn. Yeah, you have the backup, Ali. Yeah, Gina, too, exactly. So. I mean, best case scenario, if Eloise doesn't have the execute, she has to trade a lot of the board into this. Yeah, in this case, she can trade both minions and uh, use the Corruptor, or can she actually use the Blood Seeker and Weapon? This 4 damage, not really. It's really one of those high risk, high reward plays, right? If the opponent doesn't have an execute, it's like, or, like you're already far ahead in the game. You just have to trade too much. Even though it, he is overloaded for the next turn. But even the overload sets up pretty well. If, if he's forced to Elemental Destruction the following turn, he's only overloaded for 5 on turn 7, so he has 2 draws to get Lava Shock. Yeah. So he could Lava Shock on 7. So Fran is like, pretty uh, happy about this at the very moment. Um, I mean, not really, because the Earth really died, but... Well, at least there was no Execute, so... Oh, that's pretty good draw. Isn't that like the best thing to draw with Farsight? The, the Earth Alley? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what if you draw Faceless next turn? Then you get two of them. It's pretty sick. I mean, Frodan realizes his win condition at this point is just getting the Halazio and Destruction. You pair those two together. And that only comes about around turn eight, so he does really have to do a bit of survival and a bit of damage control here. And Aloy is not really going for the 6-6. Six, six. That would be... Is this kind of greedy? I would go slam down the 6-6. Six, six. You're just one damage away from a 9-9. Nine, nine. This is yeah, why she's not going for it. But is this greedy? Because this really maximizes your board state. Well, 6-6 six, six still avoids elemental distraction in a way. I mean, it survives the first distraction at least. Yeah, uh, but you, you've seen the one hex. Yeah. So you assume this 9-9 nine, nine when you play is going to survive. Yeah. One, maybe even two AoEs. And at that point, that might just be Eloise's win condition. Yeah, it's probably fine. Also, she has like no follow-up play, so playing this minion one turn later is fine. Yeah. Generally, the Dragon Warrior goes from 6 and skips down to turn 8. So wh whether you play the Crusher on 6 or 7 isn't such a huge deal. True. So this kind of sucks now, because Frozen has to play stuff off curve. He would love to play the Elemental Destruction to together with the Halazael, but it's not going to happen. Can you risk Halazael and Earth Elemental on one turn? Mm. To prepare for Elemental Destruction next turn? Or is it too risky? He's, he's going to go for the heavy overload turn right yeah. now. So he locks out how many crystals for, for next turn? Uh, eight. Eight, 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 eight crystals, eight. Yeah. But he, he needs this Earth Elite to stick. If she would draw an Execute here, he would be in a terrible spot because he's already down to 11 life. He doesn't have the heal in his hand. Well, she still has a chance. Skipping. She still has a chance to draw Execute, actually. So uh, how much damage this is? You have... You might have enough, actually, to win next, next turn anyway. She's just going for the 9-9. Nine -nine. Already contested the 7 8. She knows that Froden is overloaded. So even if he had a hex in his hand. She has 7 damage. Like, uh, oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's it. Oh, sick. That's ex exactly it. So Froden was super scared of this to happen, actually, when, we, when he talked with us for a little bit. Like, he doesn't want to face the Dragon Warrior because, yeah, it's the worst matchup from the three decks Eloise has left. She has, like, Zoo and Tempo Mage. He would have preferred to face those. It has a very high sweep potential. So would you say Eloise won the mind games in a way? Because Frodan started with Shaman and uh, didn't want to face the warrior. So Eloise kind of expected that he will start with the Shaman, countered him with the warrior and... Kind of, and you think about it, he only played two series and he free would both with Shaman, so he opened both series with Shaman. Yeah. So there was a pretty high chance he would open Shaman again. He, he took, she took the risk and yeah, it paid off. Paid off, yeah. Well, okay. I mean, looking at Frodan's other decks, he only has the, the Rogue and Druid, which are fairly weak against Dragon Warrior. When Dragon Warrior draws well, there's very little that stops it. And when you hit that Execute against Druid, it's a huge deal. And the aggression against Rogue is huge as well. Yeah. So Frodan takes this kind of flip and hopes just that the Shaman can win this and then continue to keep winning. Yeah, because if he wins versus Dragon Warrior, he is positioned quite well to win the, the rest of the match. But unfortunately... Yeah. For Frodan, Alois uh, takes this one, and uh, she's now positioned really well to take the match. Let's see how it goes. So Frodan decided to uh, queue up the Rogue, and actually we practiced this. <laughs> and he's actually pretty good against all Warrior versions with his Rogue. Yeah, and Alois gives a little bit of a sigh as she mulligans into double execute here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You want to be aggressive in this matchup as Warrior, deal out the damage as soon as possible, and 
just checkmate rogue before oh, it stabilizes. Almost always you want to just find your curve. You want to find your Alexstrasza's champion, Vorex, Frothings, with the dragons. Yeah, fire dragon, whatever. Well, as you were saying, Nimsh, um, I think you were, you were maybe preferring the, the hunter hero power here as well. I mean, it's, it's a very big consideration, but with the two executes in hand, I think you have to value the ping a little bit higher, maybe. Yeah. Just like, to help you get to the late game. With, with, the, with the normal curve, you can get, get steady shot, but with double, like, Fire Blast is also good, and especially because you don't know exactly what you will draw. Oh, that is such a big top deck. Yeah. <laughs> that actually looks like an okay opening now. And uh, she's getting tempo. Changed everything to draw the dragon here. There is an, there is actually an Edwin possible. Mm. Like a 6-6, six, six, but you don't kill the 3-3. Free, free. So what would you do here, Froden? Uh, Froden, saying <laughs> Like, there's a lot of different lines you can go for. Uh, I would just dagger and hit the 1-3. And next turn you go back, stab SI. And then the following turn you can coin sap and Edwin, and then it just moves out your curve into your either Violet Teacher or Drake the next turn. If you go all in now and you make your, your big play with uh, the SI, you don't have a good follow-up. Yeah. And it's going to be very awkward for you. Isn't it, isn't it too slow? I mean, it, it looks great, but uh, how does it look like from the tempo perspective overall? Uh, you take an additional... Because something is going to get played, right? So let's say there is frauding being played. The next turn you go for backstab aside, so you'll be able to deal with both small minions, but then frauding might be troublesome. And if there is frauding, you deal with frauding, but you keep those minions on board. Well, if she does curve out like that, uh, you could just backstab SI. And you're just taking the one extra damage off of the, the Finley, so it's not terrible. All right. So Froden went for the super safe route. He wants to be on board first, and then he has sap for the next turn if uh, Froden's being played or... But now his one cleave is kind of... Maybe... Kind of dead, right? Rotting in his hand a little bit. I like what you suggested. Seems pretty good. Yeah, me too. I just tried to explore Get like that. Get the 6-6 six, six one cleave, set up the SI. Yeah, I mean, generally you don't want to keep the executes against Rogue, so making the 6-6 six, six going fairly all in, but still having the reload with Drake seems fine. Oh, could you... Yeah, I think Froden could read the second execute, right? Because the, usually you would never execute a free free like that. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that's crossing Froden's mind right now. Like, how much he wants to invest into one minion. And we could have just seen the world's smallest Van Cleef here. What about just <laughs> putting out the 2-2? Two -two? <laughs> That's, uh, well... Have you seen that in a tournament ever? I don't think so. A 2-2 two -two Van Cleef? I haven't seen it, I think. I think and I did cast a lot of rogue and games. There are so many rogue <laughs> games, and we never saw a 2-2 two -two Van Cleef. It's now Tomb Pillager comes to the rescue in a way. Is Tomb Pillager better than Violet Teacher? I guess it is, because then you can actually get an Edwin. There's a coin as well. Finally, she gets something useful. So. Allies can just go face. Do you like trading the Cochrane? Uh, no. Let's just uh, give her, get rid of Finley, right? Go for the, uh, the Cochrane. Yeah. So both executes are gone. But it's not like you really need to execute versus Rogue. Because it's not like he's going to play Taunts. Maybe versus Big Edwin, yeah, but if, you ha if you're on board and if your opponent is at 17, you are charging. You look good. So Alois is in a good spot right now, I feel. I mean, Alois is trading those executes off for a whole lot of tempo in this early game. Yeah. I mean, the Rogue, um, from most builds we've seen nowadays, they don't really have Farseer in them anymore. Um, we've seen the Sifka Rogue with the one Squire. Um, Skulker. Yeah, one a Dark Iron Skulker and one Squire. Right, right. So. With a lack of healing, Eloise is very comfortable going face. Yeah, this is how you win this matchup. Like, you do have weapons, you have uh, Ragnaros, you have Gromash in this deck, so... You should be able to overpower Rogue. So now we've seen the Zap from Frodan, and both executes from Eloise, so... If anyone gets, gets a big minion out, uh, it's pretty high chance that it will just stick. Well, what she can do, she can kill the 3-5 and play the 3-6. I like that. I think I would even use Blood to Acre to have more board instead of just pinging. Yeah, you always keep in mind to have an Execute Enabler in your hand. 
But the buff executes are already gone, so just getting the 2-2 on the board seems pretty reasonable. She decides uh, to yeah, keep it in the hand. Why? For a future removal or something. Uh, let's say she doesn't draw a big threat. I mean, she that. has the Zuidrake, right? So it would be two damage. damage. Yeah, and then you can fit in a ping, kill off a 3-3 later on. She's, she's, go she's going for the board control. Like, in theory, you can also use Blood Seeker on turn 9 with Grumash. But then on turn 10, she can ping Grom. So. All right. Frotting. She could go for a board here. Just go a fairy, frothing, ping, trade, kill the spell power off. Yeah, that makes sense. Not get punished by a spell power off hand. Oh, that would be huge in this game. And she definitely has to respect it at this point. I mean, trading the Korkon early on, she's given up the face plan at this point. Yeah. Well, it seems like Frodon is struggling with his plays anyway, so... Alois can uh, see that and actually go for board. And having board is not bad as well. There's, uh, it's really hard to remove board from Rogue's perspective and he's not on it. I'm still holding out to Iker. At this point, it makes a lot of sense. You have Drake, Iker, Ping next turn. Seems fine. So if there would not be a profing on the board, he would probably go for the auctioneer. But now, this is a huge threat, but it doesn't seem... Well, he can remove a frothing with, uh, or can he? Yeah, with the deadly poison and shift, but that that, that, that hurts. Can you do it the other way? No. He's missing like one mana to actually go shift. He can go for a big one cleave. He saw both executes. So basically, deadly poison sh shift, take damage from frothing and play one cleave. But then if you take. Well, if you want to go for that, you will take how much damage from Frodding? Like nine? Because you will need to run your tokens into the free two. But actually, hmm. definitely painful. Yeah, I mean, the best play here is just to find Eviscerate off of the Shiv. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even Sap is fine at this point. So I guess you shift the free two first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the great place to start here. Yeah, there's like no difference if you uh, shift the frothing or the free two. It seems like you might. Oh, that's oh. actually pretty good. Sap, yeah, Sap is nice. So it seems like he maybe was going for the play where he ignores the frothing and uh, just tries to shift the free two and kill the f another free two with the minions and then just leave frothing alive, but that would be really tough. Yeah, leaving the frothing up is very, very scary. Yeah, so that sap was really saving his life there. So there's now different things that Elise can do. She can go for the frothing again. If she uh, can read that Frodan was desperate to find an answer for the frothing. A frothing slam blood to Ikor ping exactly. is pretty good. It's a very, very clean turn. And this is the, the second Drake as well. And having a dragon in hand is always pretty convenient. Like if she draws like a corrupt or something like that. Yeah, this is a tough board to deal with from Rook's perspective for sure. So Fire Blast actually seems to be a, a really good pick from the from the beginning. It's time for a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Gadgets and conceal. <laughs> you need to get prep, but like you need to get a lot of cards. <laughs> Oh, Frodon, can't you get something? That's not a prep. And uh, if he doesn't get a prep, it's over. Or is it over? Yeah, it's over because of... Uh, it's all over yeah. now. It's really over with uh, Ghoul. Yep. So Frodon goes down 2-0. Yeah, Elias gets that. Dragon Warrior, there is, a, there is a huge reason why people actually ban Warrior, right? Dragon Warrior being super strong. It's really popular in ladder as well. It's one of the highest power decks in the meta. So even if you know what your opponent plays, it's usually a good <laughs> decision to play to ban the Warrior. Yeah. And the last deck for Frodan will be his Druid, so finally at least we are going to see almost all the decks from Frodan. Druid. 
I would normally ask my co-casters, do you guys think it's Cthulhu or do you think it's Yogg? But you guys know what it is. Ah, oh, it's a special druid. Oh my god, it's Garage druid? No, 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 no. We haven't seen. This is like a completely new druid. You will be very surprised. Tempo Storm druid? It's gonna be oh. hype. Is, is that a Violet Teacher it's I see? Wild Grove? I, I'm shocked. Sick, sick, sick. No, that's like some... I mean, most of the cards are cards we see all the time, but there's some nice little text in there. When you f when I think nice little text in the current meta game, I'm thinking Sog of the Slitherer. <laughs> but yeah, you can't you can say you can't you will, say. You will notice immediately what I mean as soon as he draws it. Bog Don't know if you know? Do you know? Bogchamp? Bogchamp? No, no, no. <laughs> well, come. Oh think wait, there's a there's a Deathwing in the in the warrior list. I haven't seen that list before. What do you guys think? Deathwing, Onyxia, or No Biggie, or like Malkorok? You probably, this is a, if, this, if this is the Temple Storm Warrior, probably definitely, but overall, this is Cassid. Well, some of the games that go along, um, your opponent finally mounts a comeback, makes a giant board of Violet Teacher and tokens, and you Deathwing them, right? For, suddenly, they're trying to set up Savage War, but you just destroy them with a Deathwing. So in the cases where you need Deathwing, it's insane. Okay. Um, and I think that scenario comes up more than the cases where you need Anixia or any of the other big ones. Yeah, like Onyxia comes to the game earlier, so you, you build up a board, it's maybe a better tempo card in a way, but then it will not save you if you are behind. And the Deathwing yes. can actually save you when you're behind. And Luis decided to not go for the coin Alex Rosa's champion. <laughs> a little BM pick. I have my beard. <laughs> so Shivali's coin for Corruptor on turn 4? Yeah. And having the Deathwing and Gromash in hand. Yeah, Craptor on turn 4 is really strong. So, do you just wipe it? Oh, this little guy? Yeah, and be greedy if the a teacher. Yeah, it's going to feel your comeback, so... Once you draw that Power of the Wild, things will go pretty well for you. Oh, he also chose the Force of Nature from the Raven Idol, which is kind of interesting. And it's a good card. Look at this Force, force of Nature. Yeah, look at this counter. Free in 2016, Ella Gig. <laughs> well, you can't charge, but they are still threatening. It's 6-6 six, six power for 5 mana. Two-turn combo. Yeah, so you can actually kill one with Coraptor and then probably go face. Yeah, Eloise's draws have been pretty nice with the Dragon Warrior. Yeah, but Freda is fighting back and he will be able to, to kill the free 2 here at least. Uh, maybe even get a swipe next turn. We'll see. I mean, Alus has already seen one swipe this game. So it's it's very reasonable for her to go face here as well. Yeah, swipe is... Like, overall, I think you will still go face because you the, you want Frodan to trade into your minions. Yeah, exactly. And you are the aggressor. But uh, swipe looks really good now. Yeah, kind of get punished a little bit. No, it's only the second swipe that would punish um, yeah, swipe Alois here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you don't. You always play around the first swipe, but you never play around the second swipe. Would you even like, like 15 cards? Or even without the swipe, I, I think I would still go face, because I want to force my opponent to trade into my minions, and just throwing away a free two into two two doesn't feel good. I mean, always just very perceptive. She thought about this a lot, right? The fall in the previous turn, because you know, Frodan did use the first swipe very, very um, liberally, so you kind of expect the second one not going into it. Uh, so for now, Fran is uh, doing quite good. Oh, there's a the power of the wild. It's actually pretty sweet. But do you go for it or just slam down the war? War is a bit better, I feel. War, war is uh, war it's, it's a gamble, right? Yeah. What if, what if he has the execute? Then what if she has? Then it? he gets super ultra mega punished. <laughs> <laughs> you can also consider it killing the four four. But then with this power of the wild, you probably just want to keep the board. Maybe he's thinking last game she had. Both executes in the starting hand, so this time she will have none. Yeah, the, the chances are lower, right? It's like... That's We're not ready. That's how statistics <laughs> works, right? Gara statistics. No, like, both executes are in the bottom of the deck. It's the you might actually be right, Gara. No execute here. Looks like it so far. So this kind of sucks. Well, next slam is again free damage. Yeah. Two slams, six damage, pretty good. You got a trade, you got a Warrix. Still pretty good. Frada is definitely happy about it. That's no execute. A, a huge turning point. Like once Druid starts to recover, especially as the Yogg Druid, things can easily yeah, get out all, of control. All you want is just set up a big board, you know, the opponent doesn't run Brawl. 
yeah, that's the best feeling in the world, actually. And he has the mulch. Here, he can, he can go for, like, mulch. Violet Teacher and uh, Mara Keeper with the token and just go face. Like, he's the aggressor now, suddenly. And he will have a really good board. Yeah, I like it. Because you have already the second Violet Teacher, even if you lose your one. Yeah. Like, if he, even if you lose this one, he probably just will attack with the weapon into it. I mean, at least will attack it with the weapon into it, so... It's a good situation overall. Oh, this is also first mate. All right, guys, so what do you do as Eloise? You stall till Deathwing, and then you steal the game? Oh, can you stall that long? It doesn't look like it so far. You can kill the Violet Teacher with the Cochrane plus Blood Icarb, but then you have nothing else. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of have to at this point. Violet Teacher is too big of a threat to leave up. And you, you're left with a 2-2, two, two. he's left with 2-2-2s, two, two, it's... And uh, as soon as Froden sees a play like that, he will not hesitate to slam down the second Violet Teacher with the Power of the Wild. Yeah. And then it comes down to Eloise's next draw. Because that would be a lethal setup. Kill the 3-3 free free with the weapon, I guess. And, uh... Armor up or first, first mate? Oof. Eight mana next turn, so you probably want to play Grom and trade into something, yeah. or at least play Dragon. You have to do it. Yeah. So, it comes back to the Fairy Dragon going face, like this little tree. <laughs> it's still alive. It's on the board for quite a while. And a couple of spells from Frodan to build up a big board. Normally, Warrior has nothing to deal with it, only the Deathwing. Yeah, this is harsh. I'm maybe excited. second, maybe second Twilight Guardian. Can it stall enough? And then there's ter turn nine again. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Because of the mulch. And uh, this comes a bit too late. All right. Seems like there is nothing you can do from Eloy's perspective. Yeah, she recognizes that. So um, Frodon is actually still alive, taking the game off Eloy's. Finally defeating this Dragon Warrior uh, with his Yogg Druid, I guess. Like. And, and that's like a sigh of relief from Frodan. He's very happy also about finally taking down this Dragon Warrior. And we haven't seen the secret text yet. That's actually huge because normally in uh, those kinds of tournaments, people go 3-0-3-0-0-3-0-3. And that would be really bad. <laughs> so at least now he has a chance to fight back. Oh, that's a good chance. Just toss the mulch back. And now... Uh, I would even throw a one roots maybe. No. No, we want to keep. Against zoo. Um, roots are great. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's roots keep it. Are awesome. So, what do you guys think about this matchup? Because there's a lot of arguing about it. Who has an edge, zoo or druid? Or would, do you guys think it's tier <laughs> fifty-fifty? I would always say it depends on the starting end of the druid. It changes everything, right? That's why. That's why I would give edge to zoo, because zoo will uh, always have an okay hand, and uh, or like most most likely. And if Druid misses Ramp, or if Druid misses Living Roots and stuff like that, Druid just loses this matchup. And this is an awful hand from Luis. You definitely don't want to see a Sea Giant and a Doom Guard in your standing hand. Yeah. Like, one of them is already pretty bad, but both? I mean, well. Traditionally, Druid has um, a very bad matchup against Zoo. But the token Druid, there's, there's two very easy ways for it to win. One is the... Uh, the Druid Cheese. You just hit the, the Innervate early on, right? Yeah. Or you have a hand like Frodan, so we have Wild Growth, and you have Mire Keeper, and you just accelerate to the point where, like, the Violet Teacher and Power of the Wild just wins Holy. you the game. Can or like this, right? Can we wait a second? This is very good, too. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> That's actually pretty This nice. is awesome. This is almost game over. Yeah. Coining out that Roots so really, really paid off for Frodan yeah. here, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but this, this top deck gang boss was so necessary. It was definitely the best draw in the deck. Yeah, because if she would not get that, she just plays catch up. Yeah, it contests the whole board. And now Frodan only has a wild growth. I guess you go face for six. But still, this is awesome because it gives, uh, like for Frodan, it gives him uh, the starting, um, it's the starting point. He will not die till turn five. And the longer the game goes, it actually will favor Froden. Yeah, she would have loved to see uh, Argus, but the Councilman is pretty fine as well. 
Violet teacher. As the druid player, you don't mind so much. You expect to lose the board in the early turns, anyways. Uh, do you take a turn off here? Kill the councilman with hero power? Hmm. You have you have turn six. You have turn seven. They both have taunt, in a way. No. If you play my keeper as a free free and two two, you have a bigger board then, but it can be easily cleared. Well, you do have the sphere. You leave the councilman up, and this guy, this guy might just solo your seven drop. Yeah, if war gets taken out by that, that's, that's it, terrible. For it you. will be hard to deal with. The priority to kill a councilman might be actually as high as killing a fendral, right? Yeah. If you play against a druid and there's a fendral on board, you always kill it, right? Even if you have that, that might actually any other play. Be, that might actually be the play, I think. Yeah. A really good suggestion. Because then, like, if you kill the councilman, the board is not that scary. There's only a two-two and a one-one. And next, uh, next time you play Thorison. Well, the thing about trading, you give the opponent an additional 1 1 basically. And buff the council. I mean, Frodan's been sticking with very, very um, ballsy lines, right? Um, like the previous game, he played War on 7 um, and said, if you have execute, I lose. But if you don't, you know, I probably win. Yeah. And it's going for this again and one more time. Mega punish. Like high risk, high reward. Yeah. And this is uh, really tough. I personally would have, like, if I know my opponent runs Sea Giants, I would always keep that in mind, right? And play around it as long as I can. At some point, you just cannot play around it anymore, like past turn seven. That was, that was the uh, additional benefit of making the, the trades there and taking the turn off. Yeah, you kill a very high priority target and you play around the Sea Giant at the same time. So now... Did he know that Eloise is running Sea Giant in the deck? Maybe he didn't. He should. I think he casted even a lot of... Yeah, he casted even a Cast lot of... Okay. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> he probably he the should know. <laughs> um, yeah, now Eloise doesn't even have to trade the Councilman. So you may, Maybe you want to trade the Councilman. No. Because it only has two health now. You so. think you do, but you don't. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you land one juggle and you position the dire wolf in there, then yeah, you can you can trade off councilman and imp and go face for nine. Yeah, I would. I think I would prefer that. So how do you position it again? You you play dire wolf between uh, councilman and wolf, right? Councilman goes to five six attack. Yeah, knife juggler on the left first, and then dire wolf in between. But it's also kind of risky. Um, it's actually okay, because if it doesn't land, you just trade the Imp and then you trade the Sea Giant anyway. Yeah. Positioning would still be fine for you. So we start with Juggler. Uh, no, she she's going for the, the Gang uh, Boss. She doesn't want a Life Tap. Because it would be very awkward to just play the... As, as soon as you run double... Um, in the Doomguard list, you don't want to uh, prioritize life tapping as much. You never want to draw into the second Doomguard. Yeah, yeah. Get it out of your hand. And she plans to go for the juggler Doomguard next turn. If you don't play the gang boss this turn, it's a very awkward hand for the following turn. You don't want to discard your gang boss. This is just fine. You don't want to life tap. You have a better minion on the board. You don't need the ping. And you have a perfect curve follow-up. Now, from Frona's perspective, it's so tough. What do you swipe? <laughs> but they, 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 now it comes back again to the turn where he decided to not kill the councilman, right? Yeah, councilman yeah, yeah, is still there. It enabled her to, <laughs> to play the sea giant. The councilman is still there. Now almost the sea giant himself. Yeah, but that turn was really difficult. It was, I think, uh, a bit counterintuitive oh. not to play anything. Yeah, it was not obvious. Uh, he's thinking about the YOLO nourish. Go for the, uh, the roots and the wrath. But he already played two roots, right? Yes. Yeah. So, not so likely. So he nourished into conceit. Yeah, oh, yeah. man. So uh, Frodan loses and Eloise takes the match. 3-1 versus Frodan. But he's still not out yet, right? It was the first Yeah, this match. is just that we just started this group. So Frodan is still in the group. He can still win. Um, he just needs to win in the loser's bracket now and then win one more match. But uh, still, Eloise is going to the, to the upper bracket of this group. So one more win for Eloise and she will advance to the top eight. There's even a chance that Eloise and Friday might face off again. That would be awesome! <laughs> <laughs> Not for Eloise though, like she wants to win, but uh, we have them. Oh, we have no. the headset for Eloise, okay? It's much better to use the headset because then the players actually hear the cast. Yeah, exactly. So, Eloise, congratulations. You won versus Frodan. How hard was it? Oh, it was pretty, pretty easy. 
<laughs> oh, shots well, well, fired. Well, oh, I, mean, then. I mean, I I really don't want to I really don't want to win against him because if I bully him, he's going to Bible thump. But uh, if I lose, I'm going to Bible thump. So I chose to make him Bible thump. <laughs> hey, at least like one Temple Storm player won that match, right? Uh, yeah. Mm. All right. So, um, Eloise, um, if you if you face Frodon again, because mm -hmm. it can happen, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to face Frodon again? Are you going to like concede your next match to to face Frodon again if he wins? Uh. I don't know if he's going to buy both up. Ah, this is so complicated. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, guys, do you have any questions for Elise? Uh, no, good luck in the next series. And I hope you both uh, make it through. Yeah, mm, that's I mean, what I hope too. Mm. Yeah, that's like the best outcome for us. Yeah. That's still possible, mm. actually. If you win your next match, you go forward, and then Frodan just needs to defeat anybody else in the group. And uh... mm, He is going to do that. Mm. Uh, so, Eloise, you need to win so Frodan can win. Oh, if he win all of his match, that proves that I, I can beat everyone too. Uh. <laughs> and uh, one more question, Ali. So before this match, uh, did you just talk about the decks with Frodan or, or were you saying? Yeah, we know we know each other's deck uh, okay. very well. You know, <laughs> we practice a lot with each other. All right. So uh, well, at least you knew each other's decks, and uh -huh. so that was that was something. All right, so congratulations again. And uh, guys, we will have uh, a lot more Hearthstone for you here at the Seed Story Cup 5. But for now, we're going to the break.